Good afternoon, everyone. Can I please have a quick sound check? If you could please type a one in the chat box, if you can hear me, and also if you could see the shared screen, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Okay, so Anna, I'm gonna answer your question in regards to the futures role. Thinkorswim does it automatically for you. If you're trading on other platforms, not very familiar with them, I know that if you're trading with Ninja, then you have to input your own, um, the contract that you're actually wanting to, wanting to trade. So basically we will be uh, rolling from June contract, that is the M19, to the September contracts, which are the U19. So if you're interested in trading the June contracts after 5 p.m. Eastern, if you should be in a trade after 5 p.m. Eastern or want to take a trade into 5 p.m. Eastern, and that is the June contract, you must enter the entire symbol. So if you're trading NASDAQ or if you're trading YM or if you're trading ES, it's going to be, if you're trading on Thinkorswim, it's going to be forward slash ESM19 or forward slash YM. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, scratch that, forward slash, e, uh, forward slash YMM19, okay? So the June contract will come to trade, um, will con I'm sorry, will continue to trade until, uh, until 9.30 a.m. Eastern, and that is tomorrow, June 21st, okay? So very important day for this role. Typically, we're having sideways price action into the role. And uh, so far, we do have the most volume into, uh, into still into this June contract. So uh, no role yet. Uh, the, uh, sub the September contract is trading right now at $29.95. Okay, so you may experience a little gap in price when we open. That's due to the contract roll. All right, uh, let's uh, take a look at this market and let's see what we have going on. We have 15 minute chart throughout. We have relative strength in Russell. You can see that we're, we held the 10 a.m. low and we had a lift in the support level. Therefore, we had a, a higher low develop into Russell and the runaway price going into the high and like i said there are a lot of resistance bands uh in russell into the 40s into the 39s into the 38s and right here into the 37 and 36 so uh that's why they have been consolidating here for more than an hour so you can see we tapped into that resistance area and for the last hour plus we have been ranging the range, the bottom of the range is 1534.5. The top of the range is 1537.37.3. Uh, and this is the range right here that is, and the support level is into a minor, the support level is actually uh, set into minor support that is deriving from a prior pivot high. Um, no new highs have been established uh, through lunch uh, and uh, uh, into the trading, uh, into the morning today, uh, into the afternoon trading today, after we set a new high in the Dow into the 150, we abruptly came in. We um, um, violated the first area of support into the 60s. Remember, we talked about the 60s support zone as we came into the trading session, and therefore we were long biased. We, uh, based on the chart pattern, we took uh, YM long and uh, we had a break-even trade in this specific uh, index, right? So our entry was 26.125. Our stop was 68. And we trailed it at break-even, but not before we took half of the profits at 150. All right? So we have 125. Uh, we have 25-point gain on this particular day trade and the second half with a stop at break-even. The second trade that we took uh, incurred a loss. It was a long at 26,128. The stop was below 100. We had about a 29 point stop. Uh, we had a stop into 99. We had a first targeted back into the 150 and the trade stopped out. We lost $145 per contract. 
we had a third trade and that is the m and &E SMP. We took it long at 29.90 with a stop at 29.85. It was progressing very nicely at the time of the trigger and then it decided to do a fake out to the downside and then it rotated abruptly off, uh, off, uh, off really key support zones because if you're, we've talked about these uh, confluence zones right here all the way into the 80s. Let's go back to the 15. So anyways, we incurred a, a, a loss of uh, five points, uh, and that is $250 per contract. All right, so uh, we, had a, a, we had a fourth trade, and this is gold long at $1342.5, and uh, the trade is progressing. We had a first target into $1345, where we took uh, some profits off, and we move their stop to break even. Right now, we are up $330 per contract, so we have recouped the loss from today's morning session. All right. Uh, thanks, Taj. I hope it would have worked, but anyways. Um, and this is what happens in a sideways market plus. We had the mishap of this morning session at around 11 o'clock. Guess what happened? Internet went out. Okay, so um, we had a pause of about 10 minutes until my internet got restored. Thank you so much for joining back into the trading room. Guys, these are live conditions. This is like live television, okay? Live television. <laughs> All right, so uh, you could see, you could witness everything uh, here live, how I trade, how, uh, you know, how I manage trades. We may be, uh, we may be setting sideways for the rest of, uh, of the trading session and uh, uh, definitely within this chart structure, I do not see the opportunity for a trade for a day trade the way they are setting up right now. Uh, what I want to see, so we're back to square one. We didn't lose anything on the day. Uh, so I would love to take one or two trades in the afternoon should the opportunity be there. Uh, as the afternoon progresses, we do have a substantial decline in market volume, and that means that we do not have a lot of participation in these afternoon moves. What that means is that we may, translation, we may remain sideways for the remainder of the day. Uh, typically from two o'clock into 2.30, there are a lot of shakeouts that happen from uh, possible consolidations uh, from lunchtime doldrum, the lunch doldrum period moves. Uh, what I would like to see uh, in the indices today and even moving forward into tomorrow's trading session is a break above current high levels of the ranges. And I'm talking about 150 in the Dow. I'm talking about 95 to 96 in ES and SMP. I'm talking about a range breakout well above 75.25 in NASDAQ. And uh, in Russell, any pullback that would be, uh, let me just share with you the one hour chart, any pullback that will take the price back into the 1530 uh, or 1525 may offer an opportunity for, so that would be a, a seven to 10 point uh, pullback zone. Um, that would, provide me with an opportunity to try to leg in. But this is contingent on Russell breaking uh, and not necessarily breaking, but tapping hard onto that uh, 1540 level. The weekly charts are very conducive in all the indices for, uh, for continuation higher throughout this week and definitely going into tomorrow. But again, the big Picture is going to be on um, seeing price, how price is going to handle this role. 
uh, weekly continuation into the mini S&P. NASDAQ, definitely weekly continuation because it had a very strong um, pop into Monday. Uh, Russell was the one index that had a delayed weekly reversal and uh, has just triggered this week, the reversal. Uh, and uh, it is moving in, uh, it's, it, it is moving higher. Uh, Russell is going to have a turbulent zone all the way into the 1570. So 15, uh, so the transition from 40 to 70 is going to be tough, okay? Uh, what that means is that you, you're probably gonna witness a lot of pullbacks. Uh, it either, and there are two options here. Uh, from the technical chart, I can see areas of high resistance vibrations into this, uh, into this uh, uh, 40 to 70, and things may be choppy, or on an influx of, of, of price action, we can witness uh, a huge move to the upside right into the 70, and that is going to be a confirmation of erasing uh, that resistance zone from 40 to, uh, from 40 to, uh, it's actually 40 to 62 or 63, 70 is just, uh, a bigger, uh, bigger range that is going to take Russell outside of the chop zone. Um, Russell is still maintaining the inverse head and shoulder pattern, um, on the weekly chart. And you can see that this can be the head. This is the right shoulder and this is the left shoulder. We had a little bit of elevated shoulder here and with the revisit into the prior, uh, prior, right sh uh, prior left shoulder, I'm sorry. And then uh, once again, this pattern is poised for a much uh, um, um, harder push to the upside should we reach uh, 1600 and this is moving forward so this is a projection uh, of further price action going into next week etc 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 okay all right gold come on baby 147.50 remember our next target 147.50 okay we have a next target into 147.50 trim some there and then let it go. We're st we still have uh, two other targets along the way. We have 147.50, 149, and 13.50. All right. Uh, as long as indices are going to remain within these ranges, I'm going to be hands off. I'm not going to be doing anything. Um, like I said, although Russell is stronger uh, today, I will just leave it alone because I, I need to see how the other indices are going to influence, you know, the price on Russell as well. All right. Um, let me see here. One hour. Okay. This was, uh, I'm not really interested in gold right now. It's setting up, uh, it's setting up a, a bullish pattern here, but it has strong uh, bands of resistance into 63. So, uh, totally an asymmetric, trick, uh, asymmetric trade at this point. Like I said, if I would have been trading at 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, which I'm not doing ever, uh, I would have uh, looked to get long at 51.50 and the stop uh, under 51. So this, this would have been the trade and out and done. Um, and uh, as you can see, uh, most of these moves, and especially in crude, have happened in the overnight trading session. So on Wednesday, we had the follow through to the downside. Uh, we had uh, the continuation back into the 61.8%. This was your target. And um, back into the 20 SMA consolidation here. So uh, New York trading session was completely garbage into yesterday's trading session. Uh, at the end of the day, we did get a push to the downside, and we had news that came in that pushed uh, pushed uh, crude higher at this point. All right. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions right now. We can go ahead, and uh, you know, we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna see you know how we manage these uh, these trades, and I can talk a little bit about. Uh, until something sets up, I could talk a little bit about the class and what we teach. 
uh, in uh, in the class. And basically, what you have you know you have heard me today comment on the market. Uh, you have uh, witnessed one on one. Uh, my entries, my stop, my targets, everything goes in the portfolio. Everything is communicated with you uh, on the mic and in writing. Um, and uh, I take all my trades, okay? Absolutely all my trades. I take all my trades. Uh, not only that, but we take them in our active, uh, active Futures program. Herb is here. He takes the trades for us. If you want more information on that, shoot us an email. All right, so... Um, with that being said, uh, let's take a second and uh, let's try to uh, go through very quickly, uh, and I won't bore you, uh, promise, uh, but uh, let's go over uh, what we teach in the class until a setup is developing in the markets. And trust me, I do have my eyes on, um, on the market, okay? Uh, in fact, um, I'm still watching the Mini S&P. Mini S&P has become very jittery. Uh, and in fact, at 2.15, 2.15, we did have an algo push lower, and it was the same algo that pushed the market higher into 12, uh, into 12.40. 12.40 was an algo push, 12.45 we had another algo push, and then we had an algo pullback into 4.15. All right, so um, as you all know, uh, I teach the Power Income Futures Trading class. It is something that we have done for, uh, for some years now. Uh, I was just trading, I wasn't teaching, and uh, this uh, came by popular demand. Uh, I have a lot of, had a lot of friends, and Anna, you were here in the room, and I think Anna put me to it because, uh, Anna, are you here in the room? Because she, I, I come from stock trading, so I was a very active day trader, uh, stock day trader, and uh, I decided to make the switch to futures because you only basically watch four charts. Uh, when you trade um, stocks, you trade the stock, plus you have to keep an eye on the market in general. You have to keep an eye, <laughs> you have to keep an eye, I'll tell you in a bit. <laughs> you have to keep an eye on um, mar on the market indices, right? Because you want to be either in sync with the market indices, uh, or you want your you want your stock to have relative strength or weakness, uh, depending on what the index is doing. And why is that? Well, because you don't want to watch paint dry, right? So. What you, you, what you want to do is you want to have an accelerator run higher. So you want to trade a stock that has relative strength compared to the market uh, in, uh, indices. Or if you want to short on a weak, in a weak market, you want to uh, short the weakest thing that it is, that is out there. Uh, so I came to futures trading and Anna, I was just uh, mentioning that I think you were one of the reasons why, you know, you, um, I, I, I was forced <laughs> into this class uh, because I love to trade futures. It's a little bit different when you trade futures than when you trade stocks, but the difference is not that, I mean, there are similarities, but there are differences as well. Uh, so I teach the futures day trading class. It is a five-day class. It is live online. You can participate from anywhere in the world. All you need to do is log in. So basically all you need to, to do is to have a computer or a tablet and uh, I'm providing the link and you have to have an internet connection. Uh, the class is live online. It's June 17th to the 23rd and uh, the class is followed by a trading lab. Now I, I have um, a lot of... Uh, traders in this room right now that have or have already taken the class and they are my students and if you you can feel free to ask any questions here uh ask them if they're happy or you know anything that you like uh, so the futures day trading class curriculum is comprised of for, is comprised of a, a, a tons of uh tons of chapters let me just uh, hold on just one second because i need to uh whoops Sorry about that. I clicked on the wrong thing. I was looking at a chart. Just uh, give me a second because I received a private message and I need to answer uh, this trader uh, that is into a trade. Just give me one second, please. 
I clicked on the wrong thing. All right, by the way, the mini SMP is like doing nothing right now, so we can take, uh, take a little breather. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you, Trevor. All right, so uh, we teach you, uh, first of all, we go into an intro. Uh, who are the market participants, right? Who trades futures? Why are futures important? What is a contract? What is the role? Which contract should you trade? Uh, how, how to trade around the role? Um, the size of the contracts, trading hours, what, when are the best times to trade futures for day trading or swing trading. So all that good stuff is into, uh, into the introduction. So we have a very, very, very comprehensive introduction into trading futures. Uh, we talk about uh, uh, algorithmic trading, uh, how algos are trading and all that stuff and how our methodology is in sync with, with, with the algos, right? With the algorithmic trading. Then we talk about charting and we're talking about the candlestick language. We talk about the significance of the candlesticks and how candlesticks can predict uh, a stall in price, a continuation in price, uh, can predict uh, a pattern formation, what are patterns, um, what patterns are prone to form from those specific candles. We teach, uh, uh, we teach uh, for instance, uh, a, a strategy uh, that is based and a system that is very easy to follow. And you, all you do is basically you look at one time frame. And uh, that specific time frame, you look at the last candle on that specific time frame and you get your bias from that. And uh, it's actually very easy, especially for beginner traders. Uh, and uh, that will determine whether you're going to be bullish or bearish on the day without reading any market profiles or any, any, anything like that. I mean, if that's working for you and if you have started to learn that, good for you, you know, just go with it. If that makes you happy and if that's a methodology that's making you money, that's great. So you have to stick with what's making you money and I'm sticking with what's making money uh, for me. So in charting, not only that we talk about uh, candlesticks and candlestick formations and what they mean and the psychology behind candlesticks and how you can read every single candle has a different significance within the context of a pattern. Um, we also talk about patterns and pattern formations and uh, how and when to be bullish and uh, how and when to be bearish on those specific candles and things to look for uh, as the price progresses throughout the trading session. And of course, uh, we have the upper hand as futures traders because we have a lot of information in the overnight trading session that provides uh, a great amount of information of how the future New York trading session is going to uh, uh, is going to uh, um, is going to uh, pan out. Uh, Mike, uh, the last live course that I had was in January. Uh, typically, is scheduled to do live uh, uh, live classes every month, but we do provide the recordings and we provided extra perks uh, for uh, traders that have joined in February, March, and April. We have provided them with. Uh, uh, special mentoring, one-on-one -on -one coaching, just because they didn't take the live class. But obviously, they are going to join this class in June. Typically, it was on a month-to-month, -month, but I was very busy trading. Okay, so I really didn't have a lot of time to dedicate, you know, to teaching. So um, uh, with that being said, we usually, worst case scenario, we do it once a quarter. Okay, Mike, so worst, worst case scenario. All right, so uh, we also do, uh, we also teach you tools and indicators that we use. They're very simple, very easy to use. Uh, and we teach you uh, the tricks on how to use them for, uh, uh, you know, for clarity and to create conviction and confidence in your trading. Uh, this morning, you saw uh, the analysis that I have done in the m and &E SMP. Well, if you looked on the 30 minute chart, I didn't have a special indicator. I didn't have a crystal ball. I just had a couple of moving averages and I just had a, uh, uh, I just had, you know, price that was telling me that 
hey, if we break below, if we break below 85, we may have room to uh, go into the 80, but I'm not uh, bearish on the move because it's sideways within an uptrend, right? So objects tend to remain in motion. Once in motion, objects tend to remain in motion. So if you have the motion from point one, from point A to point B, which is from a swing low to a swing high, and then you're getting a consolidation, most of the odds are going to go in the favor for a continuation higher. It's, it's a no-brainer, okay? So if you're having an upward move and then a base, it's only normal. 75% of the time, you're going to see uh, the price explode for higher. So there's no reason to see short in the pattern. A lot of traders are seeing that, yeah, you're going to see selling pressure. And when you're looking, and I'm not ignoring the market profile, but I'm not watching it, okay? I'm just watching and focused on price action. But yeah, you, it, it would signal a sell around that area. But how much of a sell? I mean, are we talking one tick, two ticks? I mean, that's insane, right? When I'm trading, and you guys know, like a lot of traders when they're trading gold or um, any, anything else, they're looking for five ticks, three ticks, seven ticks. Oh my God, they're, they're ecstatic. If they make two ticks in the market, they're ecstatic. Well, I'm not happy for that. And if I'm investing my time in the market, and this is what I teach in class, it's for you to look for bigger moves, right? Because that's why you're here to learn, to learn how to make your life easier and how to gain more profits from the market. You don't want to be, um, let's say, a beginner trader forever. And I agree, scalping is fine, but scalping is not really going to get you anywhere because at the end of the day, and I mentioned this last night, at the end of the day, you're going to go for small profits. And when you have a loss or two losses, guess what? Those two losses and the commissions are going to tear your account apart. So that doesn't make any sense. So you have to go for bigger moves. So very simple tools and indicators. Every platform on this planet will have the indicators that we use. A couple of moving averages, and that's pretty much it. Uh, market stages. Very important to know what stage of the market you're trading in any, any given day. Uh, this is going to teach you when the market is frothy and topping and when the market is bottoming out. You will know how to short tops. You will know how to buy bottoms. You will know how to buy the dips. I'm not, not that I'm saying, I'm, and I'm not teaching, just to be very clear, I am not teaching how to short tops or bottoms, but I'm teaching you how to trade within those intervals and how to capture a short position from a high or uh, how and what uh, and how to trade within that, uh, within that uh, segment, right? So uh, basically there are, uh, there are four stages in the market and I will teach you uh, when is it the optimum time to buy, when is the optimum time to sell, and when is the optimum time to sit on your hands. And this where we are trading right now within the S&P NASDAQ uh, and basically the future indices, this is a sit on your hands type of time. It is not something that you can use uh, in your favor. You can go long and you could get stopped out. You could go short and you could get stopped out. Obviously, uh, dips in this market and into the support levels have been bought throughout the trading session today. And we have a very defined uh, low and high of the New York trading session. Uh, we teach you day trading, uh, day trading time frame, and we also teach you analytical time frame, time frames. What this means is that as day traders, you concentrate your attention to shorter time frames, to day trading, right? So therefore, shorter time frames. When and how to use these short time frames, and how to use the correlation, how to use multi time frame analysis, how to perform an analysis, where to start. Every day I look and I start looking at the monthly chart, weekly chart, daily chart, and then I zoom in to the time frame where I see my setup develop, okay? Uh, if you don't see anything on one time frame, you can zoom in or zoom out into a time frame that where you identify a pattern. If you don't identify the pattern, then you don't have a trade. You don't just get in or you don't just, you know, throw your money in the market. Thank you, Guillermo. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, also, 
advanced technical analysis. The advanced technical analysis chapter is very comprehensive. It's everything that you would ever need in this market, in any market. You don't need to learn anything else. Uh, so uh, we're dedicated, dedicating one day of our class just to advanced technical analysis, and we teach you a lot. We teach you the seven layers of uh, 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 seven layers of support resistance. We teach Fibonacci's. We teach how to trade with pivot points. We teach how to trade with uh, moving averages. How to how to trade with all the technicals on the charts with. Uh, uh, with natural price support resistance or minor support resistance. So a lot of elements that come together here, trends, trend lines, how to act, uh, et cetera. So we, we do have a lot of things that we share with you in advanced technical analysis. We also teach you the market tempo. Market has a, step, uh, has a certain tempo and it moves in cycles within the trading session. And it goes up and pulls back in a regular trading session, not in a chop chop zone like we have right now. We're trading in a chop fest right now. So market tempo is very important because that is going to define, we talked about it uh, last night in the webinar, review the recordings and I have explained why, because I received this question about uh, why do I trade at, why, what do I look for uh, at these specific uh, times in the market at 9.35, 9.45, 10 o'clock, 10.30, et cetera, et cetera there's a certain market tempo. According to this market tempo, we also teach trigger times. Now, trigger times are, again, very important and they are in sync with the market tempo. So you're not on a different phase of the market. If the market is, on a, uh, uh, is set for a pullback phase and a for, for, a pullback, uh, for a pullback stage, you are not going to go long within that area, even if you have a buy set up, right? and uh, the other way around. We also teach you the anatomy of the trade. Now, there was a question this morning answering, uh, asking why did I take my trigger at 20, uh, uh, 28.90? Why did I get in at 28.90? Well, it is because I know how to calculate precise entry, uh, entry levels. So it's a math. You calculate your entry level, you calculate your stop level, According to the difference between your entry and your stop, you decide upon uh, uh, you decide on how many uh, contracts you're going to trade with. Without that information, you have no idea uh, how much size you need to you need to give to that trade. Uh, we also teach you how to calculate targets. Now, a lot of traders are having a hard time seeing targets and calculating targets. It's actually super simple, and it's not just saying this because I've been doing it for a while and for a long while, uh, but um, I'm telling you it's super easy. It's super, super easy to determine targets. It's easy, and once you learn how to do it, trading, you're going to have that aha moment, and you're going to say, oh, okay, so that's what it is. So that's what a trigger is. That's how you calculate an entry. That's that's where you uh, that's where you have to put a stop uh, and not just pick a stop from you know randomly just because you want to you know you want to pick up a, a monetary stop um, and uh, so we also teach you in technical analysis which is very important we teach you how to calculate targets beyond uh, all time highs. So if you have a trade that or something that is trading beyond all time highs, let's say for instance, the indices are gonna take out the highs. Let's say they're gonna be taking out the highs. Um, how do you know where the price is gonna run, where the next resistance is? Well, there is a simple method that you can use in order to determine those, uh, those levels. And those are institutional levels. And you're going to see that the price is sucked into that level every single time. And of course, you can use it for the downside. You can use it for the upside. So very easy to determine uh, to determine these targets. And again, it, 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 it basically, you know, and and other than that, and Guillermo is here. I have a lot of uh, you know other traders, Anna. Uh, I don't know who else is in here because I can't see the participant list, but. Uh, 
Have you guys had any questions so far, like in determining targets or levels or anything like that? Like all the questions that I've received, like super minor questions. I think that the class is so well explained and so well put together that I don't think that I have received, you know, a lot of questions. Uh, moving forward, uh, by the way, the indices are testing the support zones. Nothing major happening. They're just going back and forth on, low, uh, on lower volume. Uh, we teach you uh, day trading, uh, day trading strategies. I don't know, day trading, trading strategies. So anyways, it's day trading strategies. We teach you day trading strategies. And uh, with this class, because we haven't hosted uh, a live class in a while, I want to give you guys a bonus. So we're going to provide you with the recordings from the swing trading class. So you are going to get the modified swing trading class for day traders. Uh, and, uh, so not only that, uh, you are going to learn day trading strategies, but also swing trading strategies and how to react and how to place the stops. And, uh, if you're trading the overnight or if you want to uh, carry on a trade for a couple of days or even a week, depending on price action, etc. I also teach trailing methods. What is a trade without a trailing method, right? So you need to know at certain levels what to do right? So you're going to be able to take those decisions for yourself, right? Uh, isn't it better instead of, you know, um, you know, listening here, listening there, you know, to know and or to or even if you join the trading room to have confidence and know it's like, oh, okay, she's looking at this level, it just confirms, we're always looking for a confirmation of something. When you see the price plummeting, right? Uh, or accelerating higher, you go like, was this news? And you're trying to find out what, what it was that, uh, that uh, made the price move in a certain direction because we're wanting to read in between the lines. So trailing method gives you that peace of mind knowing that you are in a trade and you have a plan for that trade before, it e before you even pull the trigger on the trade. So that gives you peace of mind. And it also uh, provides you the, uh, the knowledge to stay in trades when, uh, you know, when, when you see a follow through opportunity, right? Okay, uh, we also teach you how to take profits at certain levels and what to do at certain levels, et cetera, et cetera, as you're hitting targets. Uh, also, money management. Uh, it is a chapter where we discuss about risk, we discuss about reward, we discuss about the risk to reward um, uh, ratio, and how to trade with, the, uh, with a certain risk to reward ratio. And why is it important? We also teach about, we teach risk management, we also teach position sizing, which definitely position sizing is what's going to make or break your account, literally. Uh, we also teach a little bit of trading psychology. What happens if you, I don't know, have a loss uh, in a trade or if you enter a losing streak, what fear does to you, how trading is psychological, how to think, how to act, how to motivate yourself, et cetera, et cetera. So a little bit of uh, trading psychology. And the last, which is the most important thing in trading, because trust me, if you learn charting but you have no idea how to trail, or if you learn the market stages but have no idea what a trigger is and where, where to initiate a trade, uh, or if you know technical analysis but you have no idea how to do money management or you don't know how to calculate targets, it doesn't mean anything because trading is basically putting everything together. And it is a battle for yourself to improve yourself every single day, to act better, to become better, it's about having that uh, discipline and having uh, having that mental uh, mental roughness to handle the market. The markets are not for the faint of heart. Okay, they're not, uh, and you have to have a very strong personality in order to trade on a day to day basis. Okay, all right. So these are some of the things. Uh, included with the class, so you're getting the live class, which is Monday through Friday. It is every day from uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. It has two-hour modules, 
and uh, we do stay over uh, those two hours. Those two hours are basically around three hours uh, because, you know, we have questions. We answer live questions. Plus, we talk about current market environment as well. So we want to um, teach and show in real time, just like I do in the trading room. Um, um, I want to show the market condition and what we talk about in class to, uh, uh, to put all, everything together. We also provide the on-demand recordings. You have unlimited live retakes. When we do a live retake, you're with us in the class. Uh, you guys have unlimited support. You're not gonna be talking to an admin. You're not going to be talking to a counselor. Uh, you're going to talk to me. You have a question, you ask me. You have my email, you have my phone, you can text me, you can Skype me, whatever. Uh, so I get back to you. It's not that I don't answer. Okay. I get back to you as soon as I can uh, When I see your email, of course, my students my training room members have a hundred percent priority So they're uh, they're they come first uh, We don't take a lot of students as you can see I had the last live class We had it in January now we're doing another class So my goal is to educate my students and to put my hundred percent focus into live trading because ultimately what we want to do, and I think that our goal is to do what? Is to make money. That's what we want. We love money. Um, you also are going to receive the manual. You're also going to receive a professional platform layout. Uh, you can ask questions, interact with me. Uh, you're going to receive risk charts. And other than that, when you join the trading room, you will have access to the real-time portfolio which is much more than a portfolio. It has a stock position size calculator. It has uh, a futures position size calculator and a risk calculator uh, built in. Uh, it has so much information about the market, I even forget. So anyways, you have our swing trades in the trading room. We also call swing trades for stocks. Uh, and uh, swing trade for future for futures, obviously futures uh, uh, indices, commodities, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, and uh, so much more. Oh, thanks, Guillermo. Yeah. Um, so step one, how does this work? Well, first you have to join the class. Step two is you learn and trade, and you have to be in a simulator account for thirty days. I put thirty to sixty days. And what I want you to do as uh, uh, if you decide to embark on this journey with us, uh, stay in a simulated account for 30 days. And after the 30 days, trade a micro account. I don't care about the size. I care about execution, entries, stops, targets. You have to be and think like an algorithm. You saw me today. In the trading market, there was no, in the trading session, there was no hesitation. Okay, there was no hesitation. Okay. Um, then, step three, learn, trade, and earn. Implement, refine, and trade with a group of like-minded traders. You can join us in the trading room. Uh, and it is a very professional, uh, 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 great trading room. Uh, today was an example of how we run the trading room. Uh, in the class, we also teach the most powerful day trading chart patterns and how to exploit them for above average gains. And now you will have access to the swing trading patterns as well. We teach the six disciplines, which are the most important, the ESTR, uh, entry stop uh, target and risk, plus position sizing, trailing, and more how to optimize your timing using simple and powerful indicators, how to maximize gains and minimize losses using proper money management techniques, market timing, precise locations prone to institutional and algo buying or selling, advanced technical analysis, and more. If you guys want to register for this class, you can send us an email. Uh, to info at tradeoutloud.com. We also have installments available. Uh, we start on Monday. It's next Monday through Friday, five days uh, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you decide to join, shoot an email 
My team is going to answer back to you. If you want to personally speak to me about the class, although we spoke about the class curriculum, but if you want to speak about the class or if you have any other questions that we cover in class that I might not have mentioned in this presentation, feel free to shoot us an email and we will schedule uh, a phone consultation. More than happy to talk to you and I will personally uh, be speaking with you. So um, if you want to sign up, it's info at tradeoutloud.com. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. If you're interested, just uh, let me know. And uh, we will take it from there. All right. Quick recap of what has been happening in the market while we were discussing. Well, literally kind of nothing here because we hit a high into the 26, uh, 26, 140 into one o'clock. And look at these bottoming tails right here, sucking short sellers right in and the price dipping up back into this 26, 100 zone, right back into the 26, 100. Uh, this is a huge improvement from the overnight trading session because we are trading once again into a higher uh, pattern. What that means is that we have the low from last night from the overnight trading session and we have a higher low developed into 130. We have a higher low that is developed here into one o'clock, which was basically the shakeout. And then we had the rotation back up and now we're meandering in the core of the range. You can see the price is right here in the middle. Mini S&P has also had a low in the overnight trading session. You could see it right here at 10 o'clock. And then we zipped up. Uh, we tested the 28.75, and we had an we have an elevated support level into the 28.73 level, and we managed to break over these highs in the overnight trading session. Uh, trading over yesterday's highs, which initiated a, a daily buy with a daily continuation higher and now we're ranging at the top support level the elevated support level is, is uh, support level is into the 2882 and right now the resistance is still into the 95 the target that we had this morning uh same pattern with nasdaq nasdaq low the overnight trading session into the 7420 elevated support into the 7446 and we had a break over yesterday's high, which was 75.13. Uh, we have a peekable high and a range right into today's high. We, we're not yet out of the waters here, okay? So just so you know, we're not yet completely uh, out, uh, out of uh, this um, mess, right? We're still trading in a very sideways, uh, sideways pattern. Um, Russell is trading right now into the top of the range. You can see that it tapped briefly into the 33 area, and it's an area of minor support from a smaller time frame, which is coinciding with this 33 zone, and it's holding up the highs. But like I mentioned before, there are strong bands of resistance that are, uh, that are keeping the price in check below this 38 zone. Crude, like I said, it triggered a reversal. To the upside, however, it got the price got rejected into the 200 SMA, pushed back down, and right now it's trading into a messy cluster between 52 and 53. So, with that being said, it's dead to me. Like I don't see anything happening with crude, uh, at least not now, going into 3 p.m. Eastern. A very nice move in um, uh, in uh, gold has achieved that 13 uh, 1347 target. Uh, and uh, it's uh, actually pulling back briefly right now. And uh, let's see if it can have a continuation higher. Let me know if you guys, uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, Ranjit, uh, how much you charge for the trading room per month? It's $299 per month. It's much more than a trading room. Uh, you're go it's all a trading and mentoring room as well. You get all your questions answered everything. All right. And uh, just for the time being, at least uh, for this month, uh, there is um, no prerequisite to joining the trading room. We uh, may be deciding to have the trading room open just for, uh, just for members, just for students. So just giving you guys a heads up, if you decide to join the trading room, would be a good time to join this month. 
All right. So with that being said, we're still trading in ranges. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm going to be off the mic until probably a setup will develop. If there are, and um, once a setup will develop, I will be back on the mic to comment on new market conditions and the possibility to enter a trade. So feel free to post any questions. I'm here to answer. <laughs> Her? No, I agree. I agree. <laughs> we want instant gratification. We don't have patience. <laughs> I know. All right, guys. So let me know. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to post them here in the room. I'm right here, but I'm turning the mic off until uh, I see something, some developments in the market. Um, Robert, not seeing the questions. Are you seeing the questions? Not seeing the questions. Uh, Ranjit, uh, if you do not take the course, yes, you can join. You can join the trading room. Like I said, like for this month, we're thinking about having the trading and the mentoring room uh, open only for members, only for, I'm sorry, only for class students. So we can focus more on um you know on trading uh but definitely if you want to join uh you can join this month so no uh you don't have to be a student in order to join the trading room right now Yeah, this trade is a swing, which means that uh, it may be carried further into the overnight trading session. So that means that the trade will not be closed in today's trading session. The trade still has higher parameters. As you can see here, into the 1347.50, we were close to that area. If you could see the high, was at 1347, we needed just 50 cents here to go into that, into that number. And um, we still have uh, further targets into the 1350. Yeah, Herb, I think it's a good idea. because I'm giving it a little bit of room. Lalita, I'm giving it a little bit of room. You, uh, you basically choke day trades. This being a swing trade, it needs a little bit more room to develop. 
and then it has a different trailing strategy than uh, aggressive day trades. It all depends on the trading strategies, trailing strategies. We teach three trailing strategies in class. And we teach what the op more, most optimum trailing strategy should be applied for day trading, for swing trading, for different strategies. We're, so far, I'm keeping the original stop in. What you did at targets right now, you just, uh, uh, you just um, took partial profits. That's it. And depending on price action, I will be updating. Uh, do you guys, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Okay, did you guys hear what I was saying before? Okay, perfect, thank you. Because I just had a little window that popped up and said you were muted. It's like, okay. So Dorothy, my traders will be updated. We have a private feed, private Twitter feed that goes outside of the trading room hours. And uh, we update our members. Uh, can you be so, uh, can you be kind enough to repost the question, please? Uh, Dan, Apple has the potential to run into $215. That's more than we're risking. That's way more. We're not doing it for one point. This is Apple, Dan. This is Apple. You can see the trigger was right here. Apple long at 195.5. Here's our entry, 195.5. The stop is under this low, under 90. I'm giving it room, okay? I'm giving it a little bit of room. I have a confluence on here, so I'm not gonna choke the trade. The potential for this trade for immediate profit is going to be 200, but I'm looking for 205, 210, and 215. Mm-hmm. 196, 200, and beyond 200, once it clears 200, we're looking for 205, 210, and 215. Absolutely, you join the trading room, you're gonna have access to all our information. And remember, when we are in swing trades, you're not gonna be left alone because I'm in those swing trades, right? So I have to manage my money, so it's, it's not a big deal for me to post any trades updates on what I'm doing in my account. So we, you are going to automatically become a member of our um, extended trading room um, hour program. Jack Dish, I'm not sure. Did you repost the question? I hope I'm not missing it again. Trying to scroll up to see your question. If not, please retype it in here because I can't see it. I can't find it. Oh, got it. First, how to get this software for trading. There is no software. There is no software. You have to have a brokerage account and your broker is going to... Uh, 
have a link to a platform, you download the platform and poof, <laughs> you have it. There is no software to install. We don't, we don't trade based on softwares and programs and stuff like that. We do our trading manually. Smiley face. Yeah. Or if you don't want to trade your account, uh, we do have a program. It's active futures. You can, uh, you can look into that. It's on our website. No priority indicators. T Lee. <laughs> What's so priority about a moving average? <laughs> no, we don't have any. <laughs> no. And you saw how we handle price, right? I mean, really, you, you don't need a special indicator, trust me. Once you learn chart pattern, psychology behind candlesticks, have the patience to observe the market, you really don't need anything else. Guys, don't be fooled into buying systems and all that stuff. Just learn how to trade. Learn, you know, learn technical analysis, all fashion trading. All fashion trading is what works best and keep it super simple. I just use the volume. I just have the volume. Simple volume when I go to day trading. Go on a smaller time frame chart. Just volume. You want I want to see the volume because I want to see the market participation, right? I want to see the market participation. If there's a spike in volume or if uh, there's a, you know, there are different significance and this is something that we teach in class, uh, ranch it. This is how we teach in, uh, this is what we teach in class because if we have a parabolic move associated with a high spike in the volume, well, that's gonna tell us something. So we need to take precautionary measures when we see that type of activity on our charts. That's a great question. What is the ideal time frame for day trading? There is no ideal time for day trading. You have to make sure that you know how to navigate back and forth through time frames um, and uh, where you identify a setup. And you saw that this morning I had my charts on five and then I switched to 15 and then I switched to the 30 minute because it's about using a combination of time frames. Uh, when you trade, and I mentioned this into the first class um, that we had, um, you need to have a proper setup. So as day traders, if you embark on this journey, um, don't just fund your account and say, oh, this, the most important part of trading is funding the account. No, it's not. And they're all uh, very important. It's about funding, the, yeah, funding the account should come last. It's about, um, first of all, education right? I wouldn't trade live and I wouldn't tell a trader to trade live unless, you know, they fully understand and feel confident um, with, their, uh, with their trading. But before that, you have to, if you're very new to trading, you have to familiarize yourself with the platform. And trust me, that takes at least 30 days, at least. It's a lot of pressure to try to understand the platform and it's a lot of pressure to try to, uh, to try to trade. When you trade, you should have everything all set up. Everything, your screens, your charts. So even if I move through these time frames, I'm not toggling along and I'm not making any major changes, right? And this is just my watch list. And uh, go back to... Um, the first, uh, the first day to day one, where I talk about the screens and setups, and going back to your question about time frames, typically in the morning, because and let's say in a trending market, 
in a training market, you have to watch um, the two minute charts, one minute and two minute. In this market, you can see that I have navigated away from that time frame and I am uh, I zoomed out to the 15 minute chart. Yes, I do. I do use Fibonacci's and I combine them with every element on my chart with support, with resistance, with minor support, minor resistance, with moving averages, with pivots, with natural price action, with pivots formed by natural price action, etc. So I combine them with everything. It's all about multiple layers um, that are stacked. You want clusters of support. You want clusters of resistance in order to have a high up trade. So today, very sideways day, going into uh, going into the close right now. It's three ten. Typically, I like to watch uh, the three thirty price action, and if there's a trade. Uh, I like to take it around 3:30. Things are the, the dice are rolling. The, the dice are rolled at that time, right? So we pretty much have a good expectation of what's going to happen. But because of the, the today's price action and the sideways price action that we're having, I doubt that we're going to have any kind of continuation. Just a very boring sideways sideways price action so far. If I use Elliott waves, I take into consideration these Elliott waves as, as well, but I look at them on a daily, weekly level. Basically, you have to have a trend in order to use those waves, and you use them on a higher time frame. To get a better read on what's going to happen into uh, these smaller time frames. So you basically need to use everything. But if you're, um, uh, I mean, if, if you know how to read trends, you really don't need Elliott waves that much. Elliott waves are great for um, swing trading, but when you, when you have a, sharp pullbacks in the market or when you have the market that is topping out or and when you have pullbacks you pretty much know the range where the pullback may be Hey guys, feel free to ask any questions. So far we're uh, on the trajectory for the pullback back into the support level from lunch.
Oppie, I, I saw your question and I have sent you a message. <laughs> oh my goodness, T. Lee, you're reading my mind. When, when is the tweet? Like yesterday we were long in YM. <laughs> okay. We were, go, we were going like, we would love to see a tweet right now. We would love to see a tweet, but a good one. Uh, when to sell a uh, short sell a stock? Well, it's in a, when it's in a downtrend. Yeah, leave the stop in, Dorothy. Leave the stop in. Based on price action, we may get a pullback, uh, but it's very early right now, and I, I can't tell you what the trail stop is because it's still not set. Uh, if we get a pullback back into our entry, you what you can do, you place your stop at break even right now. Place your stop at break even, 1243.2. Okay, the worst that can happen is that you're not gonna make anything in this trade because it's not set up yet. And you're not in my trading group, so I cannot update you on uh, in the overnight trading session on what to do in the trade. But um, the worst thing that can happen is to take you out at break even and where you don't lose anything. And if you want, you can put your, uh, your uh, stop, I don't know, uh, at 1344 so you cover commissions. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. I, I wish I could tell you right now what to do, but you need the price to start gyrating a little bit. You need to set some, it needs to set some kind of pattern. Oh, well, thanks, Dorothy. I appreciate it. All right, guys, we're trading uh, back into uh, these lows here. I really don't want to be caught uh, into uh, the close trading this contract. 
because the volume is going to switch to the next one, to the September one. And you can see that the price is getting hooked here so far into this, these support zones. No, uh, no, I would never short a bullish market. I would never short a bullish market. You have no reason to short a bullish market. Pullbacks within a bullish market are very shallow. And you have no idea if you're going to get a consolidation or a shallow pullback. So you're going to be caught on the wrong foot. Try to follow the trend, the bigger time frame. Don't be stuck on a tick chart or a small time frame chart or, uh, you know, if you're day trading or if you're swing trading, just why would you go against the trend? That's, that's just stupid. No. No. I'm not shorting against the trend. I am shorting in a downtrend, but I'm not, I'm not going to short. In fact, guys, yeah, if you want, you could actually place your stops at break even and gold, right? Place your stop at break even and gold if you want. Okay, yeah, um, I, I know, I don't know, it's, it's so small. Yeah, you're right, Herb. Uh, no, not here. If it pulls back, maybe. Um, Thank you. 
Okay. I know I did, and I forgot. <laughs> I know I did, and then I forgot. Okay, perfect. Okay. Let me look at it again. You mean if the trade goes to 38 or 50%, that's wishful thinking because in a very strong uptrend, I don't know if they're going to near, if they're getting near that. That's wishful, that's wishful trading and hopeful trading. That's not a strategy. You're talking about if it pulls back to 38, if it pulls back to 50. That if, yeah, it could give you profits. And if it does that, it would be nice. But that is the big if right there. Why not wait and look for a buy at 38 or a buy at 50 that can provide you with a reversal, a setup, and a great risk to reward if you're looking for the proper entries. See, that's one of the biggest things a lot of traders are doing because they're hearing retracement, but that is if, if it's pulling back, if it's, if, that, that, that's the unknown. Trading is not about the unknown. It's about what's happening now in the market. It's the now in the market. You see what I mean? Let me see if I could see an example here. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah, cuz we don't know what's going to what's going to happen there. Okay, so first off, ah, we could do it here. All right, so let's do this. Let's get some fibs going. Swing high to swing low of this move. All right, that's the 23% right there. Okay, that's the 23% right there. So, how do you know that this is the top? Number one, how do you know this is the top? Okay, uh, this is just a pullback. Is this an uptrend or a downtrend? It's an uptrend, right? We talked about it this morning in the pre-market game plan. It has higher highs and higher lows, right? And it has more than two, three higher highs and higher lows. So that's the clear definition of an uptrend. What we have here is just a pullback into the support level from the overnight trading session from the gap up on Sunday. And then we have the price meandering and then we have an opening range here, right? Opening range. So what that means is that we're going from 91 where we have expanded to 96 and we went from 80 all the way to 67 right so we have expanded the range let me see if i could show you how what this expansion might look like okay oops not the right one all right here you have it 
Okay. Let me do it again. Okay, here it is. Do you guys see it? Jack dish. Okay, so you can see the opening range. What this means is that the price can oscillate between these support resistance levels without being bearish, right? Because it's still holding the expansion. So with that being said, if the price is gonna break over 95, it's gonna start going higher, okay? So if you were to short here, where would you short? You know what I mean? Where would you short? Why would you go for this chop to the downside where you could go for a, a ride like this, where you can ride it for 20, 30 points higher? You're gonna try to make what? Like peanuts instead of taking, getting like the whole peanut, peanut tree. <laughs> Okay, the bush or whatever. <laughs> okay, so this is where we're trading right now. This, this pattern couldn't be any more difficult for day traders. Inside this expansion, we have support at 80. Okay, we have support at 80. We don't hold 80. We may gyrate here with, that, with, with keeping an uptrend. Okay, with keeping... Why would you go against the trend and... Let's say you decided to short, I don't know, here or here, right? And then you would have been what? Taken out. If you like to be stopped out and if you want to be and if you want to become your goal, and this is not to you, Jen Dish, but anyone in general, if you want to go against the trend, join the liquidity providers group, providing liquidity to the market. You're becoming a liquidity provider, that's it. You're not making a profit, you're just providing liquidity. So what I mean by that is why not wait until it pulls back and settles, it gives you a certain confirmation that yes, it is ready to go higher or it's gonna break down or it's giving you a sign that it has a sell pattern in it. You know what I mean? So you have to have conviction in your move and you have to weigh your odds in your favor. Why would you go for small profits? If your goal is to make small profits, you should quit trading altogether. Because if you are wired for a mentality for, for small profits, you're not gonna make any profits. You have to be wired and look for bigger profits so you can squeeze some profits from your setup. I mean, I don't know who taught you that, but that is the most craziest thing I have ever heard. As a trader, you have to be wired and you equipped because that's why you're dedicating your time and effort and that's why we're here every day, eight hours a day. So we can improve our trading and we could go for the big moves, not for the small moves. <laughs> Her. All right. I mean, guys, reality check. I mean, seriously. Think, the, think bigger picture. Do you want to achieve, like, what is your life goal? Why did you get into trading? You didn't get into trading to, to make small profits right? You want to make it. All right. I still think that S&P is very bullish over 95. Very bullish over 95.
Exactly, Lee. But that's good. That's good. The fact that you guys are here means that you are willing to put in the effort to exceed and to excel at trading. You guys want to go in for the big points, for the big profits. Don't limit yourself. And remember, you only have to learn it once and then you're set. All you have to do is implement every single day. That's right. But you have to be in the market and you have to, you also have to have realistic expectations, but you have to be in the market every day, every day, be in the market every day. That's really important. Okay, so we're bouncing again from support. This is the ramp time. These buys off support level here are very aggressive, especially in a sideways market. And I don't think that we're going to have anything because we're going to be trapped pretty much in this June contract. So this is pretty much a wrap here. Thanks so much, Herb. I will. Feel free, guys, to ask any questions. We're trading just a sloppy range bound market ahead of the ahead of the roll. Uh, no, Dorothy. You got trailed out, not stopped out, just saying. Stopped out has a negative connotation. When you incur a loss, you get stopped out. If you trail out, at a higher level than your entry price or at your entry price, it is called you are trailed out, meaning that you did not incur any losses. Okay, this is not for you, but for everybody in the room.
Um, Ronald, I, I have no idea. I don't do that kind of stuff. I just look at the market breadth, market internals. I look at, uh, I scan through uh, different different things. So I, I, I don't do that. I look at chart patterns and this is what gives, that's what provides me entries. That's what provides me the bias for the day. And you can see that into the end of the trading session, we didn't really have a sell. So that's what I watch. Mm. my goodness it's just pouring here where i am it's like tropical rain All right, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm I'm still on the mic. I use the 20 simple moving average, the 50 simple moving average, the 200 simple moving average, and the 10 exponential moving average. The, there are actually four. The pink one right here is the 10 exponential. The blue is the 20 simple. The green is the 50 simple. And the red line that you see here is the 200 simple.
Yeah, price is still going to grind into the close, guys. This is a wrap. Let me know if you have any questions. I will close the trading room at 4 o'clock. And uh, other than that, um, if you guys decide to join uh, the class, remember the uh, deadline to join the class is tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern. And uh, if you want to join the trading room, you could go to our website, tradeoutloud.com, and uh, click on the trading room tab. Uh, we will provide you with the recording from today's trading session. And also day one and two were already sent out uh, last night of the class. You're very welcome, Rod. What happens when moving, uh, when averages, crosses, and bullish setup? Well, there's a whole, uh, there's a whole lot of, there's, there, there's, there's a lot of things that are happening and there are diff different crosses with different meanings. Um, and time frames have a lot to do with, uh, uh, with the, with the crosses, because if you're getting a cross in the one minute or on the tick chart, that means nothing. Uh, so you have to respect, there's a lot to say about this and we teach this in class, in technical analysis. Um, well, all the, tr Stan, all the trades can be, uh, can be, for instance, so here's the thing. If I have, uh, if I have an index that has better setups and has relative strength, um, I'm going to trade the index that has higher odds for a continuation higher. Don't you agree? So I'm not going to be stuck with the S, right? So I may call a trade in YM versus the S&P, or I may trade a, a, a call a trade in NASDAQ. That's what our work is all about here. Um, or I may call a trade, I don't know, in Russell. Um, I pick my trade based on technical analysis, what has the odds for an acceleration higher, faster, to achieve targets and be done. Uh, for instance, because there, uh, at times, most of the indices are in sync, you could actually choose to trade the ES every single day, if that's what you want, just to trade the mini &E S&P. Um, that's, you know, that's your choice. But definitely, I think it's a great advantage for you to know what index to trade so you can accomplish more from it. So basically, all the trades to answer your question, all the trades that I do, you can actually, uh, you could actually um, uh, take with, uh, with the m &E and So there are parameters that I call, for instance, if that's your favorite set up and if you say, hey, you know what? I'm only gonna trade the m and &E SMP. That's it, I have blinders on. I don't see anything that's going on around me. I just, there is one index and this index I'm gonna trade. Of course, if I call a trade in, uh, let's say if I wanna call a trade in YM over 137 above this range, there's nothing stopping you from taking S&P above 95. But based on the trading criteria, Okay, we're looking at symmetry, we're looking at synchronicity, we're looking at relative strength and relative weakness, so there, there's a lot. So what I'm trying to say is that when you learn how to trade the right way, you are going to adopt a vision for what's happening in the markets, right? The other thing, NASDAQ had a relative weakness. If you would have been a trader that would have traded just NASDAQ, right? Every time when we called a long, let's say in YM or ES, you would have stopped out of NASDAQ because it had relative weakness. You see what I mean? Uh, so basically all the trades that we take, you can, uh, you can carbon copy them. And I, I often make suggestions in the trading room. I say you could take ES or YM, and these are the most go-to indices. But of course, you know, um, tech, uh, tech stocks, semiconductors, 
Don't forget that I come from a stock trading background, okay? So I keep a closed eye of what's happening every single day in all these stocks, okay? So because I know these internals and the stocks and what's happening with these sectors, I know at which index to, uh, to look into. I hope that answered your question. Uh, how do you trade the opening gap up and down? All technicals go hayway. Uh, sure. There's a lot to talk about a gap and really don't have the time here to talk about the gap. Gaps, what happens, uh, you, mean, you mean gaps and futures, right? Like we had on Sunday. You apply the same principles that you apply in stock gap trading. You know how to trade stocks. You know how to trade gaps in stocks the same way, same criteria. It is very important to see where the stock has closed, whether it's in an uptrend or a downtrend, where it had opened, what, is, what was the trajectory from the open, and calculate the pullbacks. If it trades below, uh, below the gap up support, it's most likely going to come in, and there are levels that you need to watch, or if it's ranging bullishly within the open range, then there are different scenarios. There are different scenarios. You have to take the class to, uh, to be able to have a complete you know, information on that. Uh, Ranch, if I'm in the trading room, how do I get the pivot points, port resistance levels, targets? I mentioned them in the room. I call the trades in the room. I call the trades in the room. Um, you're using a ninja platform. Well, there's not, here's the thing. You, I use basic, you should be able to use a call ninja and tell them that you want to install a daily pivots and you want to install these moving averages. The 20, the 50, the 200 simple moving average and then uh, the 10 exponential, that's it. You can install these. They're free on any, any platform in the world, free. Yeah. But I'm not going to teach you how in the trading room. I'm not going to teach you because we don't have time to teach in the trading room. We just mentor. And, but what, what I do is you're going to follow my trades, the trades that I execute. And it was pretty much like we've traded this morning. So you're going to see the entry, the stop, the tart. So I do all the work for you. But you have to know how to trade. I mean, you can't just follow someone blindly, no matter who that person is. You have to know how to trade. And if that trade makes so, so basically you have to know how to position size, you have to know how to do all that stuff because I don't know your account size. So I can't tell you how many contracts you're gonna get in with, depending on your size and everything. This is something that you have to know how to do before you join the trading room. In the trading room, it's basically, a continuation, if you will, of the, um, of the class. All right, guys, this is a wrap. Um, not calling any other trades. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, we're holding uh, the 11 o'clock support zone in YM and ES and in NASDAQ. And uh, we may be, let's see how this roll is going to happen. And based on what we get, uh, we're going to move forward into tomorrow's trading session. Don't forget that next week. We are going to uh, have a pretty um, turbulent week. We have the FOMC uh, meeting, projection meeting uh, on Wednesday. We have uh, 
the rate decision at two o'clock. We have the press conference uh, at two thirty, and we also have uh, we on Friday we have option expiration. So uh, it's going to be a difficult week, and uh, good luck on trading it. It's not going to be easy next week. All right, guys, this is a wrap. Thanks so much for joining. If you have questions about the class or for joining, feel free to send an email at info at tradeoutloud.com. Or you could visit our website for more information. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good night. By the way, you're very welcome. Everyone in here is very, very, very welcome. Okay, thanks so much, guys. Thanks for coming.